The United States Power Squadrons is pleased to present this video. You can help reduce the number of accidents by viewing this program and taking the accompanying USPS personal watercraft course. There's a written test at the end of this course. This course is approved by the National Association of State Boating Law Administrators. After you've satisfactorily completed the test, you'll receive a certificate. To contact the United States Power Squadrons or to reach other members of the United Safe Boating Institute, call the toll-free number 1-888-4-USPS. That's toll-free, 1-888-4-USPS. Ten percent of all recreational boats that are registered are personal watercraft, and that 10% is involved in one out of three boating accidents. The causes of these accidents are driving under the influence of drugs or alcohol, running into another boat, and hitting a fixed object. The United Safe Boating Institute, in an effort to change this, is presenting this program. What you've just seen is only some of the fun and excitement you can have on your personal watercraft. Those highly skilled drivers you just saw didn't just jump on their personal watercraft and start riding like pros. As you'll see, it takes a lot of time, effort, and knowledge. I'm Lieutenant Brant Bass. And I'm Laura Noons. For the next half an hour, Brant and I, with a little help from our friends, are going to be educating you on the finer points of owning and operating your own personal watercraft, or PWC as we like to call them. Now, we know you're anxious to get started on your adventure, but before you do, there are a few things we'll need to discuss to help make your experience both exciting and safe. Things like your responsibilities as a personal watercraft owner and operator. Inside tips about equipment and what to look out for on the water. And important safety procedures. Pay attention and we might just make an ace out of you yet. Okay, everyone ready to get to it? Let's go. Do you know what this, this, and this have in common? The U.S. Coast Guard defines all of these vessels as boats, and those who operate them are all considered boaters. That's right. You are a boater, with all the same requirements and regulations that all boaters are subject to. As you'll see, that's no small responsibility. Obviously, there are some fundamental differences between personal watercraft and other boats. For instance, your PWC is designed to operate in shallow water and is quickly and easily maneuvered. It allows for easy on-water reboarding. In case you fall off. And instead of sitting or standing in the boat, you sit or stand on the boat. But the most unique difference is the jet propulsion system. This means that your boat, unlike most other boats, has no propeller or rudder. Instead, water is pumped from under the PWC and forced past a device called an impeller, located near the rear of your craft in a protective housing. The result is a pressurization that pushes the boat through the water. This design is actually based on the same principles used in jet aircraft engines. Even though there isn't the danger from an exposed propeller, there are still some precautions you need to take. Here are some important safety tips to keep in mind. Always keep hands, feet, hair, and clothing away from the pump intake. When checking the pump intake for debris, make sure the engine is off. Don't operate your boat in water less than 24 inches deep. Anything stirred up from the bottom can enter your intake and cause damage to the system or can shoot out and cause injury. Your PWC doesn't have a rudder for steering like conventional boats. It uses a directional nozzle located at the rear of the PWC. When you steer to the left or right, the nozzle directs a stream of water to push your boat in the direction you are steering. Remember that you must have power to the pump in order to maintain steering control. If for some reason you lose power, 
and there's no stream of water coming out of the nozzle, the steering system will not turn the boat. Not all PWCs have identical steering systems. It's a good idea to read your owner's manual to better understand the specifics on how your craft operates. Now before you head out on the water, there's some important equipment that you need to be aware of. You may know this piece of equipment as a life jacket or life vest. It's also known as a personal flotation device, or PFD for short. But the most important thing to remember about it is it could save your life. Over 80% of all boating fatalities are caused by not wearing one of these. The U.S. Coast Guard requires one personal flotation device for each person. In fact, most states have passed laws requiring personal watercraft operators and their passengers to wear their vests. Although there are five different types of PFDs that are Coast Guard approved, a Type 3 life jacket is generally considered to be the most comfortable for boating sports. Personal watercraft are the only type of boat where the rider is expected to fall off. This is why it's so important for everyone to wear their life vests. Here's some more information about items that you're required to have on board. All motor-driven boats must carry Coast Guard approved readily accessible fire extinguishers. Just like life jackets, fire extinguishers are also classified by type. The Coast Guard requires that a Class B1 hand-portable extinguisher be on board each personal watercraft at all times. It's a good idea to frequently check your extinguisher for any damage. Check the gauge for proper pressure and make sure all locking pins and sealing wires are in place. In the event of an actual fire, swim away from the craft to a safe distance. You're required to have a whistle or similar warning device to alert other boaters. Just like cars, your PWC must have a registration number. In most cases, the numbers are issued by state agencies and are used to identify the boat. Check with your boat dealer to find out how to apply for a number and which agency in your state handles boat registrations. You'll be issued a certificate which must be kept on board your watercraft at all times. The boat's number must be prominently displayed on the exterior of the boat as follows. The letters or numbers must read from left to right. They must be displayed on the forward half of the boat or as far forward as practical. They must be of contrasting color to the hull. They need to be as high above the water line as practical. Letters must be separated from numbers by spaces or hyphens. Validation decals must be displayed within six inches of the number. There's another number you need to be aware of. It's the hull identification number, and it's found on all boats. It's a good idea to write this number down and keep it in a safe place in case your PWC turns up missing. There's other safety equipment that can help make your boating safer and more comfortable. Here's a look at some of those items. If your PWC has a safety cord, always attach it to yourself so that when you fall off, the engine will automatically shut down. When you're on the water, glare and spray can impair your vision. Sunglasses or goggles can help protect your sight from the elements. Foot protection can help maintain good footing and protect you from injury. Gloves can also help you keep a good grip on the controls. And a wetsuit, a good friend to have in cold waters. Wetsuits come in many styles and sizes to suit the conditions you may be riding in. Whether you make a mental checklist or write it down, it's always a good idea to go over all of your equipment before you launch. Here's some important checks you can make before you get underway. Check to see that the steering control is working properly. Check fuel and oil for proper levels and for any leaking. Hoses should be in good condition and connections should be tight. The battery should be charged and fluid levels checked. Make sure it's properly secured. Inspect the engine and seat latches for any damage. Check the pump intake area for any debris. Inspect the hull for cracks or other damage. Test start the engine to check the throttle control. Then test the engine shutoff cord or kill switch. Check the choke and reserve fuel controls. 
Make sure your registration and owner's manual are on board in a waterproof container and that your fire extinguisher is properly stowed. about what to expect on the water and what will be expected of you, there are a few basic boating terms you'll need to know. These terms have been in use for centuries. Learning them will help you understand the rules of the road. Pay attention to this because it can get a little confusing. Here goes. When you're facing forward, the bow is the front. Which is not to be confused with the stern. Which when looking forward is behind you toward the aft. Which is not to be confused with the port side. Which when looking forward is on your left or on the other side of starboard. Which is on the right if you're still looking forward if you're looking toward the aft. That's the rear. Then it would be on your left and port would be on your right. <laughs> Got that? I told you it could get a little confusing. Let's try this again, a little slower this time. <laughs> <laughs> the front part of the boat is called the bow. There's another term which has to do with the front of the boat, and that word is forward. The difference between bow and forward is simple. The bow refers to the front part of the boat. Forward means the direction toward the front of the boat. The same is true of the rear. The back of the boat is called the stern. The other term that has to do with the rear is the aft. Aft means toward the rear of the boat. So we have bow and forward when discussing the front of the boat, and we have stern and aft when referring to the rear of the boat. Now that we have the front and back of the boat covered, we can discuss left and right. The left side of the boat is called the port side, and the right is called the starboard. Port left, starboard right. There'll be a review of all the terms you'll learn later on in the program. When driving a car or riding a bicycle, there are certain rules of the road which are needed for safety. City streets have clearly marked lanes. The water, on the other hand, has no visible lanes. That's why it's important to know the rules of navigation. That's right. These rules are important. They were developed by the Coast Guard to prevent collisions and reduce boating accidents. Remember, you're a boater, and other boaters will assume that you know the rules of navigation. When you take your PWC onto the water, you take with you that responsibility. The most important concept you'll need to know is right of way. When you're on the water, you will use right of way rules to help you navigate your PWC through traffic. The three types of right-of-way situations you'll encounter are called meeting head-on, overtaking, and crossing. You should always approach another boat with caution. Even if you have the right-of-way, you can't assume the other boaters will know your intentions. Remember, you're driving one of the most maneuverable boats on the water, and it's easier for you to change course than other boats. In fact, one rule to keep in mind is that sailboats and other non-powered boats always have the right-of-way. This is because they can't react to situations on the water as quickly as power boats can. No matter how you encounter these boaters, you must always give them the right-of-way. Whether you're driving a PwC or a car, you'll see that the rules are a lot alike. Let's take a close look at how the right-of-way rules work. The most important reason for having rules of the road is to prevent collisions and accidents. This is why the term right-of-way has been replaced by the term stand-on. Even if you are the stand-on vessel and you have the right-of-way, if a collision is imminent, you must take any means necessary to avoid it. The most important element of the right-of-way rule is that the boat on the right has the right-of-way. When you encounter another boat and it's on your left, you have the right-of-way. You are called the stand-on vessel. The other boat is called the give way vessel and must give way. Typically, the give way boat will steer right, crossing behind the stand on boat. Be sure you're able to see what's on the other side of the boat you're crossing behind. You never know what might be waiting for you on the other side. If you're the right of way boat during crossing, continue on the same course at the same speed. You should only change course if the threat of a collision exists. When you encounter another boat in a head-on situation, both boats should steer to the right. Make sure the other boater knows what you're doing and proceed slowly. When you want to pass or overtake another vessel, remember, the boat that's being overtaken is the stand-on boat and has the right-of-way. 
You may pass on either side of this vessel, making sure to stay well out of the way of the boat being passed. The boat that's being passed should maintain its course and speed. As mentioned earlier, all boats that are not powered, such as sailboats, always have the right of way. Other boats in that category are sailboards, canoes, rowboats, and all other boats propelled by either oars or paddles. There are other vessels which you must yield to as well. Large ships like tankers, cargo, military vessels, and boats with a lot of power like tugboats are always given the right of way. Don't underestimate the speed and power of these large ships. Any boat that is not moving, such as a fishing boat or dive boat, should also be kept clear of. The safe use of a PWC places a large responsibility on the driver. Staying alert and using your common sense are just as important as any piece of safety gear. Defensive boating is the key to safe boating. Always give yourself enough room so that you can react. Don't rely on other boaters to make the right move. Sometimes you might have to deviate from the accepted rules in order to prevent an accident. If you find yourself in this situation, you're authorized to take any measures necessary to prevent an accident or collision. Along with knowing the proper boating terms and navigation rules, there is something else that is just as important. In most cases, you'll be sharing the water with other personal watercraft, as well as boaters, swimmers, fishermen, water skiers, divers, you name it. Just like you, all those other people are out for a little fun and relaxation. That important thing I mentioned is a little thing called courtesy. Because of their unique nature, PWCs stand out amongst other boats. Being aware of others around you and having respect for their right to enjoy the water will help keep the perception of PWCs in good standing with the boating community. Abusing the freedom of the water prevents others from enjoying it and creates pressure in regulating boating activity. The biggest complaint about PWCs is noise. Noise travels further on water. If you're sensitive about when and where you operate your personal watercraft, you'll help to keep the perception of PWCs a positive one. Be especially careful around the shore. You're responsible for any damage caused by your wake. When you are near the water's edge or in any congested area, slow down. High speeds create high wakes, and high wakes can create conflicts. In many of these areas, signs are posted with speed limits or wake restrictions. Signs or markers are something you'll encounter on the water. The restrictions shown on these signs are not just suggestions, they're the law, and must be adhered to. Here's a look at some of the signs you might encounter on the water and on the shore. When you're on the water, keep a sharp eye out for anything in the water. Remember that the glare from the sun can make swimmers and other objects hard to see. Keep your personal watercraft at a minimal speed when you're near swimmers. Here's some other things to watch out for. Areas to avoid are those where strong currents are common and near rocks, jetties, and dams. Although PWCs are designed to operate in more shallow water than other boats, it's extremely dangerous to operate your PWC in very shallow water. Remember, shallow water can quickly become no water. Operating your PWC can be an exhilarating experience. Unsafe or reckless driving is the best way to make for a short day on the water. The physical demands that PWCs place on our bodies is tremendous. Don't overdo it. When you ride tired, it's easy to become less observant and more prone to accident. Know your limitations and know your PWC's limitations. Take the time to build up your endurance and get the feel of how your PWC handles. As mentioned earlier, personal watercraft are the only boat designed for the operator to fall off. When you're first learning to ride your PWC, you may take many spills before you acquire the balance needed for controlled operation. Your PWC is designed, depending on the model, to either circle back to you or automatically shut off once a safety cord that's attached to you is pulled out. 
In either case, you should swim to your PWC and carefully reboard, making sure to reattach the cord if need be. If your PWC is capable of pulling a water skier, you must have an observer or spotter on board at all times. The driver cannot watch the skier and operate the PWC at the same time. Make sure you work out a hand signal system with the skier. Stay out of congested areas or areas where obstacles are present. With the added weight of a spotter and a skier, your PWC won't be as responsive to throttling and steering as it normally is. When you take on passengers or you allow others to operate your PWC, it's your responsibility to make sure that they wear the proper safety equipment and are aware of all the responsibilities required of PWC operators. Now we need to discuss something very important, the lethal mixture of operating your PWC under the influence of alcohol. Alcohol figures in over half of all boating accidents and fatalities. What makes alcohol consumption uniquely dangerous with PWC operation is a little known phenomenon called boater's fatigue. Studies have shown that exposure to the elements, the noise, vibration, sun, glare, wind, and wave motion, produces a kind of fatigue which actually slows reaction time almost as much as if you were legally drunk. If you drink and try to drive your PWC, it only compounds the effect, making the situation the perfect setting for an accident. Drinking and driving anytime is a bad idea, and doing it while driving a PWC is a recipe for disaster. If you do happen to have an accident while operating your PWC, you're required to report it to the local authority. Make sure you get all the proper information you'll need to file a report. I bet you never thought there'd be so much information that you'd have to know about owning and operating a personal watercraft. As you just saw, there's a lot more to it than just getting in the water. Let's take a few moments to review some of the important topics we've covered in this program. Remember that when you're operating a personal watercraft, you are considered a boater, and you have the same responsibilities that all other boaters have. Keep in mind that you'll be driving a very unique craft Unique because of excellent maneuverability, jet propulsion, and shallow water capability. Never ride your PWC in less than 24 inches of water. Always wear your Coast Guard approved life vest and make sure that everyone else on your craft wears one as well. You're responsible for the safety and actions of those who are either a passenger or are driving your PWC. 80% of all boating fatalities are caused by not wearing a life jacket. Make sure you have a properly maintained Class B1 Coast Guard approved fire extinguisher on board at all times. Check it periodically to make sure it's in good shape. Always give your PWC the once over before you take it in the water. Take the time to develop a list of items to check, such as the steering, fuel and oil levels, hose connections, battery levels and storage, engine damage, the pump intake for any debris, the hull for cracks and other damage. Test start the engine. Check the throttle and kill switch. Remember, the place to find problems is on the shore, not the water. Make sure your PWC has a valid registration and current stickers. Your number must be properly displayed at all times, and you must keep your registration on board at all times. Write down your hull identification number in case your PWC is stolen. PWC owners should use the same basic boating terms that have been in use for centuries. Remember that the bow is the front of the boat, and forward means toward the front. The stern is the rear of the boat, and aft means toward the rear of the boat. The left side of the boat is the port side, and the right side of the boat is starboard. The rules of navigation were developed by the Coast Guard to help boaters avoid accidents. All boaters should know and use them. There are three types of on-the-water situations. Meeting head-on, crossing, and overtaking. The boat with the right-of-way is called the stand-on vessel. The boat without the right-of-way is called the give-way vessel. Remember that the boat on the right has the right of way, 
and the boat being overtaken has the right of way. All non-powered boats, such as sailboats, always have the right of way. Keep in mind that a little courtesy can go a long way. Be considerate of others, both on the water and on the shore. Polite boating reduces both the chance of conflict and increased regulation. You're responsible for any damage you create when operating your PWC. Pay attention to signs when you're on the water, and remember that they are the law. Stay out of unsafe areas where strong currents or obstacles like jetties or dams exist. Keep a sharp eye out for anything in the water. Glare from the sun can make swimmers and other objects hard to see. Riding your PWC for extended periods of time can lead to boater's fatigue, a unique condition that can impair your abilities. Know both your own limitations and those of your PWC. Take time to build up your endurance. Defensive boating is the key to safe boating. Staying alert and using your common sense will help ensure your safety and the safety of those around you. And never ever drink and drive your PWC. Alcohol and boating do not mix. It's illegal and dangerous. There are a lot of people who I'm sure wish they could be with us today to tell us that personally. Thank you for taking the time to watch this program. PWC-related accidents and injuries make up too large a percentage of boating statistics. Thanks for watching. And safe boating. The United Safe Boating Institute is a nonprofit organization whose purpose is to provide boating safety research and education for the boating public. In addition, the USBI can provide information and access to boating education through its member organizations, which are the American Red Cross, United States Coast Guard Auxiliary, United States Power Squadrons, United States Sailing Association, and the Canadian Power and Sail Squadrons. For more information about USBI, please write to us at 1504 Blue Ridge Road, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27607. To contact the United States Power Squadrons or to reach other members of the United Safe Boating Institute, call the toll-free number 1-888-4-USPS. That's toll-free, 1-888-4-USPS.